like to introduce uh, Dr. Eric Gordon, who's our resident senior research fellow on educational innovations at Teachers College. His whole philosophy of life is to be playful, to take risks, to be entrepreneurial, and that's so it can be very annoying sometimes when you work and you have to get something done, but uh, that's the way Eric works and he's been uh, really pushing the boundaries. His research is about learning beyond the boundaries of school, what that looks like, how you can violate time and space, and you learn even more that school is maybe not the, the most fruitful place of actual learning, that there are other places and ways to learn. So he's kind of a curator of what he heard today. Um, and, and ways to spark your thinking and provoke your thinking as we move forward. So for a very quick moment, we're going to hear Eric talk, and hopefully it will inspire you to think about your own districts. First, I just want to say thank you for today, uh, beyond just that you all came out to share, but there was this uh, a stance of sharing that I, I saw across all of these sites, and I think that's really, when we talk about what does it mean to be innovative, in a particular context, that we have so much to learn from each other. You know, we're in the middle of this, what people talk about as an open source revolution. Um, so I see all of these districts coming out saying, here's what we're doing, learn from it. Not saying, here's what we're doing, we're going to guard it. Uh, you know, stripping down any arrogance and saying, we've got some successes that we want to share because we're proud of them, but we also want to share them because we want you to learn from them. So there's a collaborative nature that I really appreciate. I want to just sum up a few things that I see as some really um, principles of practice that bind us in this work. And the first that I've heard this, it really is reiterated more than anything. I've heard this over and over today, that no one size fits all. You know, we were talking before about, uh, Lynn and I, about that to be really innovative, it is contextual. It's not, you know, innovation lives in specific places in specific ways. And we have much to learn from each other. But we also have our own homes that are very specific and they function different than each other's in a lot of ways. And another way is that based off of this idea that no one size fits all as a solution, that multiplicity comes from a willingness to experiment and prototype. And I think it was, I don't remember which speaker, it's been a long day, who talked about it is messy. I mean, there's a sandbox mentality in this, this work too, that rapid prototyping can be messy. And it's not always looking to win, even to be completely successful. But sometimes it's the failures that inform our practice the most. A renaissance, in some ways, somebody mentioned before, of these ideas. I want to share something that comes from 1968. And I think it's very relevant to our work right now. So yes, we are not reinventing the wheel. We may be in the midst of some massive change but there's so much to learn from from the past. So this, these are rules for students and teachers from John Cage and Corita, uh, Corita Kent. Um, these are fabulous. I'll share them in the slides. Um, a number of you have seen them. They went kind of viral on the internet for a while. I want to focus on two, though, and it's these ones right here. Rule four, consider everything an experiment. And rule six, nothing is a mistake. And that is where we run into these tensions. You know, we live in schools where everything is a mistake. You know, it's very high stakes. And what does it mean to be, you know, to, to be in these cultures of risk aversion, but to say nothing is a mistake. There's no win, no fail. There's only make. Which, I mean, if I had a classroom now to go to, that would be hanging above the door, that last slide right there. I want to channel quickly. We've talked a lot about district level change. Um, uh, Ken shared some, he kind of brought in some teachers and students, which I was very pleased with to hear their voices in here too in the videos. I want to share an example of a project now that I'm working on with a, a teacher that represents some of those pr principles of practice that I was talking about. This is, in a lot of ways, it uses some of the same tools that Jerry was talking about earlier in the day, but it uses them in a different way, where we're engaging students as publishing authors to create textbooks. So this is a teacher that I'm working with in New York City. Um, it grew out of conversations starting about two years ago that Project Gutenberg, which many of you know, Project Gutenberg that houses now over 40,000 open source texts. So everything from Dracula to the Canterbury Tales is free, full text, and online. 
So what does it mean to think of that as this massive resource to reinvent the textbook by students for students? So we've actually started this process that's using iBooks Author, along with all of these open source texts, to teach multimedia literary response um, and started the eGutenberg project, where students are creating books for tablets um, based on these open source texts. So what does it mean to take something like Dracula, have you know, a class engaging in all types of response, from video, audio, uh, critical literary response, and then start to insert all of these live multimedia links into one of these books and post it back up into the, the uh, iBook store for free. Uh, then the next year, let's say that Dracula has 300 multimedia annotations from this year's teaching. The next year we take it down, teach it again, but this is our text. And the students do a whole nother round, and now we put it back up, and it's got a thousand annotations by students for students. And so they're not just studying the, the original text, they're looking at how they are co authoring and interpreting this text together. And then we have the, the E. Gutenberg. What was, and I'll show you, and I showed this, he'd probably be embarrassed. Um, his, his position in this is three minutes, is quick and dirty, um, and I will be quick and quick. Um, in, in really a prototype mentality. So it's not about getting it perfect. It's about doing it quickly, learning together through what we did, taking risks together, and then improving it. Um, so his prototype is really, the first one was just about teaching them about creative commons, teaching them about copyright law, and looking for open source photographs, images, and then doing some dramatic readings out of uh, out of all ways are more precious than gas. Round and round and spell. To wrench the murderer's blade in the face of foreign foes. And take a noble spirit. Now, this was so incredibly low tech, this version. <coughs> I mean, it was dirty, it was low tech, there was nothing dazzling about it, but the learning was enormous. And what he decided is the next time, prototype two, he wanted to do a lot more teaching around annotation. So he put leaves of grass uh, up on. Um, and a, a number of women pieces up on a collaborative annotation tool on the web. And all of his students started annotating this together and opening conversations, thinking of annotation as a publication in itself. Then we strip that down and publish it on those iBooks. Again, it's learning through the process. It's not saying that this first iBook has to be perfect. It's saying it's going to be dirty, it's going to be messy. We're going to learn from it. And what, what this is really, I mean, this is a core principle here, a bias towards action. This is a teacher who's saying, I want to try something. And, you know, I was thinking about as I listened to some of these really interesting frameworks and metrices we're talking about, none of us is saying, well, it's time to mandate creative thinking. And our, you know, our teachers, from now on, you must teach. We're talking about how do we get into what teachers are doing, inspire them, meet them where they are, and help them to grow it out of their curriculum. And my final piece um, is just this third piece, and that doing is the new thinking. I mean, we're hearing about maker spaces, we're hearing about all of this, um, you know, our, our friends from Finland who are talking about all of this kind of learning by doing curriculum as well, that we're not just sitting around talking about the action, but the people who've come together here have come together to really prototype innovation to think about how to push at the edges and then share that back and be okay, although I know we're still pretty uncomfortable with um, not always getting it right. So this is our, this was the, the, the teacher's idea that, you know, he got super excited. He said, well, why don't we make a website where we invite other teachers around the world to start creating open source multimedia response books from Project Gutenberg. So we now, just, I mean, this was this weekend I was working with him. So we now own the E. Gutenberg site, and we're going to start, you know, the only rule of participating once we get it live is that we can't sell any of these books. That in the, the kind of impulse of open source that is Gutenberg project, they're all given away to take into other people's classrooms. Fail early, fail often, fail better, right? Fail early to succeed often. It's still uncomfortable. 
It's very uncomfortable for me. I'm a recovery perfectionist. <laughs> but what does it mean to take that impulse into this work? So thank you all for coming. Um, I want to thank all of our presenters today, Jerry, Lynn, Mike, uh, Mario, Yuka, Cindy, Liz, Elliot, Candy, Colleen, for taking the time to come out here today. Um, and now that we're almost at the end of our time together, um, I'm sure many of you had moments as you were listening to our presenters today where you nodded your head in agreement because we maybe shared the views and ideas of one of our presenters or because you too currently have similar protocols and initiatives going on in your district. There's also a possibility that some of you, I'm hoping all of you, um, had at least one movement, moment where you jolted in your seat and said, aha, and perhaps you were inspired by something you heard to try out in your own district when you go back, or maybe something reminded you of an idea that you had and hoped to begin in your district, but by chance got caught up in other things. We all get caught up in other things. And today it brought you back to that seed idea, and perhaps when you go back, you'll reach out <coughs> to it and push it in your district. Um, or maybe today's events confirmed all the great things that are already happening in your district. Um, and you feel motivated to go back and just check in on your staff, check in on your teachers, um, check in on your students to see how everything's go going. Hopefully something sparked. Today was really here and intended to provoke you. I hope we've provoked you. And the discussions were really carefully chosen to encourage you to consider what is already happening in your school district. And more so, we wanted to challenge you to envision and what else would you like to happen in your school district? Now, as Deb mentioned at the very beginning of today, all of your districts are somewhere along the continuum of engaging in initiatives. Whether your district's focus is in assessment, instruction, professional development, blended learning, or the center of innovation, we all know that there are many, many stakeholders. Teachers, students, the community, parents, you, everybody. And we all know that teaching and learning no longer is meant to be kept in the walls of our schools or classrooms. We know that time and space has become porous and valuable. Um, and we also know that we can learn just about anything from Google search, or following a Twitter feed every five minutes, or watching a YouTube tutorial from somebody in Japan. So we have to ask ourselves, if we can already do that off the internet, what do we need to be doing in our schools? So I suppose the best question to ask before you leave today is how do I know I'm providing students and te teachers in my school district the optimum opportunities to learn from and engage with all of the resources available around the world? How can my district be a trailblazer? Not a trendsetter, not something you jump onto and get bored of and get off of again. But a trailblazer that envisions and pushes the envelope as to what teaching and learning can be starting today and in the future. And there's no one right way, that's the difficult thing and the beautiful. Um, so, you'll see in your folder all of our contact information, contact information of the districts that presented today. If there's anything that you'd like to further discuss or um, just want to pick somebody's brain about, you may visit Finland, you may visit Weston. Uh, we started the conversation today. Thank you again for attending. Thank you.